Come November 3rd, you've got more to vote on than just the candidates. Because it's Alabama, you'll also have to decide on a bunch of amendments that you have never heard of, and some of which won't affect you at all. So to help reduce some of the confusion, let's run down the six amendments you'll be facing on this ballot. I'm not here to tell you how to vote, just to tell you what the amendments do. Fortunately, three of them don't really do anything, so this will go a bit faster. First on the doesn't do anything list is Amendment 1. This changes the wording in the Constitution so that only U.S. citizens are allowed to vote in Alabama. Now, if you're thinking, don't you already have to be a U.S. citizen to vote in Alabama? Yes, you do! This amendment does nothing but give the bill's sponsor something to point at to prove they are against illegal immigration or for election security or something. So vote yes, vote no, don't vote at all on this one. It doesn't really matter, won't change anything. Amendment 2 is more complicated because it does a lot of little things for the courts. Firstly, it changes who can choose the administrative director of the courts. That job is the person who basically manages the busy work of the courts from keeping the dockets organized to making sure the guy who cleans the courtrooms gets his check. Currently, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court picks that person, and this would change it so it's up to the whole Supreme Court. My understanding is that this is so every time a new person becomes Chief Justice, they don't have to completely reorganize the people who do the office work. The rest of the amendment has to do with the Judicial Inquiry Commission, the group tasked with investigating judges for misconduct and possibly bringing charges. Amendment 2 would increase that commission from 9 members to 11 members and end the practice of automatically suspending judges who are being investigated. Another change in this amendment refers to how judges can be removed. Currently, judges can be removed by the courts or by impeachment by the Alabama legislature. Voting yes on this amendment would remove impeachment as an option for judges. So who picks the administrator, how many members are on the Judicial Inquiry Commission, ending suspension of judges who are under investigation, and removing impeachment as an option for judges are all up for grabs on this amendment. So vote how you feel on that one. On to Amendment 3, and we're still in the courts. This one involves how long appointed judges can serve before they have to face election. Currently, if a judge steps down, dies, is removed, whatever, the person who is appointed to replace them gets to serve out one full year before having to run for election. Amendment 3 would make that two full years, so voting on this one depends on how you feel about how long appointed judges should be allowed to serve before facing a vote. And now we're at Amendment 4, and this is the big one. Voting for this amendment would task the state legislature with going through the Constitution of Alabama and basically recompiling it to get rid of repetitive language and racist language and just chunks of it that have long been declared unconstitutional in America. That would happen in 2022, and even if approved, the recompiled constitution would go to another statewide vote before being adopted. Here's the thing. Alabama has the longest constitution in the world. The way it was written, to get even small things done in specific counties, an amendment to the constitution has to be passed meaning the Constitution has over 900 amendments and counting. And those amendments aren't organized by county, they're just tossed on the pile. Want to know how many amendments affect just Montgomery County and what they do? You're going to have to go through a century's worth of amendments in no particular order. The recompiled Constitution would organize a bunch of that and get rid of repetitive language. On top of that, the Constitution was written by a bunch of guys still in their feelings over the Civil War. So there's a lot of racist stuff and things like poll taxes that have been long declared illegal in the U.S., but nobody bothered to take take them out of the Alabama Constitution. This would gut that stuff out too. So voting on this amendment would task the legislature to get cracking on the recompiled Constitution, but voters will still need to approve it before it's adopted. Voting no means that they wouldn't and the Constitution just stays the same. Finally, amendments five and six, which we'll do together because they are the same thing for two different counties. These would add language to the Constitution, making it legal to use deadly force in self-defense or defense of another in a church under certain conditions. Amendment five does this for churches in Franklin County, and Amendment 6 does this for churches in Lauderdale County. This is referring to stand your ground laws, where if somebody decides to shoot up a church, it's legal to use deadly force to stop them without having to attempt to flee first. However, that is already the law everywhere in Alabama. And you know what's included in everywhere? Churches in Franklin and Lauderdale counties. So these both change nothing. These are the other examples of amendments that only exist so their sponsors can claim they did something. Again, voting yes or no or not voting at all will not affect anything, so it doesn't really matter what you do. Now you're caught up. Happy voting. I'm Jonathan Soboleski for AL.com.